a friend of mine, she teaches a fourth grade class and they were a theology class. So they had to take a test to say, you know, what are the three vows that religious um, people take, right? Chastity, obedience, poverty, chastity, obedience. Okay. And this one kid wrote down puberty, like P-O-O, -O, you know, <laughs> puberty, Obadiah, and chasticles. So today we're going to talk about chasticles. <laughs> Chastity. Today we want to talk about chastity, how to actually live it out. One of the top yeah. questions we get is, I'm I, great, I buy into it, I get it. How do I actually... Do this thing. Yeah. How, how do, do I, I live it out? Live chastely yeah. without losing my mind. So, <laughs> got some tips for you today. Uh, and the very first thing we want to do and start with is prayer. Because it's not just a, a white knuckle, uh, unhealthy repression. Chastity is the fruit of prayer. And so let's actually take it to prayer. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Lord, thank you for the gift of our bodies. Thank you for the gifts of um, desire, of um, the ache we have for you, and how that comes out so much in our love. Purify us, purify our desires, allow us to sit in times of loneliness, to sit in times of temptation, to keep our eyes on you. Transform our desires, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know what? I, when you said that, I actually, that's why we start with prayer. It made me think that a lot of times we aren't chaste because that ache in our hearts, we try to fill that with pleasure, with, with people, with relationships, with romance. So to the extent that we pray and that we allow God to satisfy that ache is to the extent that we won't use people. Mm. We will learn to love people properly because chastity, the definition of chastity is an integration of body and soul. Our body is following what our soul wants because a lot of times with sin, or I guess this is what sin is. Sin is when um, our souls know, like, I should love you, I should treat you properly, but our body's like, oh, but I want to use you for the pleasure I can get, right? Sin is always like, it's, it's this disruption. We know we're supposed to be doing something, but our body's not following it. So chastity is this integration where my soul knows I should be loving and my body follows that. But we can't do that without a relationship with God. Like we can't just pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. I had friends who tried to do that before their wedding. They were not being chased. And like six months before they're like, we have to, we have to be chased. We have to be chased. But it, it doesn't work like that. Like chastity is a virtue and virtue takes practice. Just like a professional athlete, mm -hmm. right? Like you read a book about how, how long does it take to become a professional or something? 10,000 hours, 10,001. 10, yeah, 10,000 hours. So if you're a professional baseball player or a professional musician, it takes a lot of practice. And so when it comes to chastity, it's not just like an overnight success. You're gonna stumble and fall. You're gonna have to practice and practice to learn how to love um, the other. So the first thing we say is prayer. Prayer, your relationship with God, letting God satisfy that ache and not using other people with for that ache, whether it's pornography, um, whether that's in a relationship, using somebody for emotional or physical pleasure. So first thing, God needs to satisfy that ache, number one. Uh, number two, know thyself. Mm -hmm. St. Thomas More said, a man should not go where he is tempted. And so know yourself. Know what am I trying to, to do? What am I trying to get out of this relationship? And be honest with yourself. Like, what are your intentions? What are you intending? It's like, okay, so I'm not, my motives aren't pure here. When, when there's students that will try to woo a lady, I, I challenge them. Be like, guys, what are you doing? Why are you bringing this girl flowers? Are you, are you going to honor her? Are you going to like bring her over to meet your family and whatever? Oh, no, Mr. Oh, it's like, okay, well, what are you doing? And they, they, if you're shying away from your motives, that's, that's a, a sign. Um, maybe my heart's not in the right place here. Maybe I need to untwist something. And that requires dying to myself, dying to my, my lust, maybe my desire to use someone that has to die for real love to bloom. But to know, okay, well, there's certain apps that get me in trouble, certain spots on the internet that get me in trouble. St. Thomas More would say, do not go there. And, and I'm pretty sure in scripture it says, if there's an app that is causing you to sin, cut it off. Right? It says that? It's somewhere in the back. Yeah. Um, but if, it, if there's an app like, like Snapchat, we know, man, people say Snapchat, even the advertisements or even Instagram when you search and there's like half naked people all over the place. If that is causing you to sin. Don't do it. 
Is your soul, like, is your soul, is it worth it, really, to just, like, no, get rid of it. No. Rid of it. Be mature. Get rid of it. Yeah. No one to stop scrolling. No, be honest, if you have to get rid of uh, an app or a device. I know guys uh, and um, girls yeah. who have downgraded from smartphones to dumb phones, because they're like, this is not worth my soul. Know yourself hungry. Uh, I, I learned the acronym HALT. And HALTS. you could say HALTS. Let's add the S on there. HALTS. So, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, stressed. You're hungry, you're not yourself when you're hungry. If you get hangry and you make bad decisions, know, be aware when I'm hungry, I'm not in the right state of mind. Angry, definitely don't make good decisions when you're angry, so know that. Lonely is a big one, especially for, for chastity, that I will seek out intimacy, false intimacy, whether that's people, whether that's stuff on the internet. So recognize, okay, I'm, I'm lonely, I should take this to prayer instead of trying to, you know, indulge in anything else that that's not going to lead to good a good outcome here tired if, if you know that i don't make good decisions after a certain point when i'm sleepy be aware don't mm -hmm. put yourself in that spot and the last thing is stress because stress absolutely will affect us in our decision making yeah. so know yourself be honest with yourself and what the motives are in your heart number three I would say a huge part of being chased um, and this is when you were if you're in a relationship um, is make sure the person that you are dating or um, pursuing that they are on the same page because it is difficult enough already when you are when you are with somebody um, who is on the same page it is so difficult to be chased so when we were engaged oh my gosh I was like I know this guy's the guy I'm gonna marry I love him um, I want to give myself fully to him and that was it was so difficult I'm like look at him he's handsome okay um shucks <laughs> but i it's like oh i love you so much oh, but we're not married you're not married until you're married even if you got a ring on it you are not married until you say wedding vows until you have committed your life you're not married because we've known engaged couples who've given themselves fully but they weren't married and then they broke off the engagement make sure they're on the same page because the person is just tolerating you i have this a lot when when I would date guys like in uh college i i would immediately tell them number one i'm not having sex with you and some of them be like Oh, or I, and I would say, I'm not doing all these other things either. And they're like, oh, come on, don't be such a prude. I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. I will cut you. <laughs> not, not like that. Not like with like a shift, but like cut the relationship. Uh, and I did because I realized they were just, they didn't care about, they just wanted to use me for pleasure. And if someone, if you're in a relationship with someone like that, um, do not be in it because it's not worth it. You need someone who cares for you, who wants to love you because it is difficult enough when you're on the same page. If you are not on the same page, that person is going to push you and keep pushing you and push you until you are in a moment of weakness, which happens to all of us, right? And then you're gonna, I have so many friends who've had that happen, right? You're, it's in a moment of weakness, you're like, man, there's something I never thought I would do. I did because this person was not trying to help me. But when you are on the same page, it's still difficult. So what are some things which we can do? Which is why you need number four, Yeah. accountability. So friendships, yeah. people that will hold you uh, accountable to the mm -hmm. truth and ask you, how are you doing? And your chastity. So for guys especially, you need good male friendships. Ladies, you need good lady friendships. When we were dating, we both had friends that I would ask, how are you guys doing? So we knew that mm -hmm. on top of our own, trying to keep boundaries, not staying um, you know, past a certain time, we also knew that friends would be asking, how are you guys doing? So that's a good thing in the back of the head that, again, love speaks truth. So love wants to know and be transparent and open in the light when we, we're trying to sin, when we're acting on selfish impulses. We try to hide. Yep. So we try to maybe hide a relationship or hide what we're doing from other people. But love says, I want this open to the truth, which is, again, it, it's, it's kind of a, a painful thing. We have to die to ourselves and our own self-centered um, desires. Yeah. But it's the only way to authentically love. So you need to seek out friends and pray for good friendships. If you feel that you don't have that, ask God to give you a good friend that and maybe you need to be that for someone else too maybe god's putting that on your heart so you can ask someone hey do you want someone to walk with you on this yeah uh number five have some boundaries for yourself for us it was like listen if it gets past 10 o'clock you need to go because past 10 o'clock we become trolls or whatever you know 10 11 o'clock whatever time you know you need to go that's good um number two i i kind of start i say to people like if you're by if you're especially if you're on the younger side and your parents aren't home and start like you know date in the context of relationships um it's always to me a red flag when people always need to be by themselves like they don't date in in community and don't date with family and lastly i would say um if you want to be chased you have to stay detached in a way 
So this person is not yours until they're yours, until you've said, I am yours and you are mine at the, you know, in your wedding vows. So you have to always, it, it helps me a lot to say, like this person might marry somebody else. Like they, they might marry my best friend. They might become a priest, which some of them did. Um, but to know that like when I'm dating, my goal is not again to get as much as I can, but to love them, respect them and um, help to guard their heart, mind, body and soul. So it helped me in a way to say like, this is, this is my brother in Christ who I love. And um, if someday I meet their future wife, I should be proud of the things I did with them. Or if they become a priest, um, I should be proud that I helped guard and protect their heart, mind, body, and soul. Now, again, we don't do this perfectly, so that's why we need confession. We need, um, we need God's grace. We need to pray. Um, we need community and all the things we just said. So, Your desires will be transformed, but it's a lifelong process, day by day, hour by hour. We're praying for you. Godspeed. From all of us at Ascension Presents, God bless.